In at number 10, we have Surge. Surge was first launched by the Coca Cola Company in 1997 to directly compete with Pepsi's Mountain Dew. Now, it was hugely popular among kids, although I never got to try it myself, so I'm not exactly sure what it tasted like. People say, though, it tasted a bit like Sprite, but less fizzy, if that's a taste. Imagine sugary citrus. It ended up being just as famous for its distinctive can design as the actual taste inside. For many fans of Splurge, the logo brings back fond memories of the 90s, drinking unnatural looking drinks that kept you up all night at your friend's sleepover. The reason it's not higher up on this list is because it was actually brought back in some areas of the US in 2015, but a lot of international fans of the drink are still left without it, and apparently the new one just does not taste the same. Next up at number 9 we have 7up Gold. If you put gold at the end of anything, it sounds better, doesn't it? Danny Burke Gold. There you go, just made myself sound better. 7up Gold came out in 1988 and was a bit less like a lemonade than the original original and had a bit more spicy flavour to it, kind of like a ginger ale with some apple cinnamon kick. Many people who tried it seemed to really really like it. The problem was it struggled to attract new customers who didn't actually know what it tasted like based on the name alone. I don't know about you guys, but I've not tasted too much gold in my life, not licked any gold bars. Coming in at number 8 now, we have Coca Cola Black Cherry Vanilla. This drink name left no confusion about exactly what it tasted like. It was launched by Coca Cola in January 2007. Six, at a time when the company was phasing out vanilla coke in North America. This left vanilla lovers craving for a fix, and so many people were happy to jump on the new bandwagon and try vanilla coke with a black cherry twist. Now it stood out among other soft drinks at the time as being made with real sugar and not corn syrup. Coke lovers loved it, but it only lasted a little over a year because the original vanilla coke came back and apparently the earth can't handle two vanilla flavoured coke drinks. Next up at number 7 now, we have the original new New York Seltzer. Okay, this is a real old school soft drink, guys. The New York Seltzer was first released in 1981, and as you might expect from its name, it originated in New California. It was produced by father and son Alan and Randy Miller, which only added to its whole feel good family vibe. The flavors range from vanilla cream soda to orange to raspberry, and they promised that every single bottle of seltzer was preservative free, which in the 1980s was like unheard of. Even babies weren't being born preservative free. Coming in at number 6 now, we have Mountain Dew Pitch Black. It was first released in October 2004 in the US and Canada and put a sour grape twist on the original Mountain Dew flavour. It was initially released as a limited edition Halloween flavour, but Mountain Dew drinkers loved it so much it kept popping up and being re-released every other year. These days it has been discontinued in a number of countries, but you can still find Pitch Black in Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines or if you're in the US, Mountain Maverick gas stations. Yeah, I have no idea how many Maverick gas stations there are, but that's where you can find it. Next up at number five, we have Lifesavers Soda. For those of you guys who live outside of the US or Canada, Lifesavers are small circular bits of candy, kind of like fruit polos if you're from the UK, I guess. They've always been very popular, so in 1980, the company thought, hey, why don't we just turn them into a drink? For the first few years, the drink did really well among Lifesavers fans who would use it to wash down a nice pack of Lifesavers, I guess. But by 1989, the drink had been discontinued due to poor sales. One critic said it ultimately failed because it gave consumers the impression they would actually be drinking liquid candy. Sounds a bit gross to me, but I also think that's kind of what drew some people in. Coming in at number 4, we have Super Mario Bros. Soda. If something can fit Mario's face on it, Nintendo will put Mario's face on it. Super Mario Soda was obviously a complete gimmick. Sales did okay, despite the soda not being too great apparently. This was obviously because of the Mario effect. Nintendo knew they could sell wood to a forest if it had Mario's face on it. The flavours were Mario Punch, Yoshi Apple, Luigi Berry and Princess Toadstool Cherry. Presumably because Princess Peach Cherry might be a little bit confusing, but now it sounds like mushroom cherry flavour. Next up at number 3 we have Coca Cola Black. Yes, that is the real spelling, we didn't mess that up. It was released in 2006 and was basically what would happen if you mix Coca Cola with coffee. It was aimed at adults as the company tried to cut into the coffee market. Presumably they hoped that one day adults wouldn't start their days with a hot cup of coffee, they'd all be opening bottles of this stuff every single morning. Now there was a lot of hype around this drink when it came out, but it seems like people weren't quite ready to have their coke and coffee mixed together and the product was eventually discontinued in 2008. Alright, we are at the number 2 spot now and we have High C Ecto Cooler. In 1989 the world
world was still going Ghostbusters crazy after the release of Ghostbusters 2 and the fans wanted something to drink while they watched ghosts being busted. The response was High C Ecto Cooler. It was a fruit drink that was a reworked version of High C's Citrus Cooler. They changed Citrus to Ecto which stands for Ectoplasm and bam you got yourself a smash hit fruit drink. Amazingly the drink did so well that it wasn't discontinued until 1997, a full 8 years after the movie. And finally at the number 1 spot we have the legendary Crystal Pepsi. This stuff is like folklore. Pepsi released a totally transparent version of Pepsi. It was similar to the original drink in taste but was said to be a little bit lighter, more like a lemonade. But nobody cared about that when it was released in 1992, everyone went crazy because it was see through. Pepsi marketed it as a clear alternative to other colas. They basically tried to make out it was healthy for you when it clearly wasn't. It seems like people believed this at first because sales did very well but eventually people got sick of their Pepsi looking like water and sales began to fall. These days you can mainly find Crystal Pepsi being drunk by YouTubers who open 25 year old bottles of the stuff and then end up throwing up when they drink it because the drink has gone bad. What a lovely lasting memory for that product. Alright starting off at number 10 we have Sprite Remix. Now you guys all know Sprite obviously but some of you might not remember Sprite Remix. It was a clear caffeine free version of the drink with totally different flavours to the lemonade original. It came in tropical, very clear and Aruba jam. That last one uh, is a flavour I've never heard of before in my life in anything ever. It was released in 2003 and only lasted two years due to poor sales. Now the company also released a strange do it yourself packet that contained sugary flavours of the drink that you were then supposed to pour into a normal can of Sprite to make it into a Sprite remix. I think that was a little bit too much work for soda fans. Next up at number 9 we have OK Soda. This drink came out in the early 90s at a time when teenagers were sick and tired of the patronising in your face advertising of the 80s. OK Soda, OK, and managed to make a name for itself with its quirky packaging and unique design. It had a fruity flavour but that wasn't why it succeeded, it was just how strange it all looked, just how odd the advertising was and just how OK it was in general. In the early 90s being just OK was pretty cool. Next up at number 8 we have Clearly Canadian. Now hold on. I know what some of you guys are going to say. Wait, I can get this stuff where I'm from. Well yes, it is being reintroduced into some parts of the world but not everyone has it yet and it was such a big one to be discontinued that I had to put it on the list. It came in four flavours of mountain blackberry, wild cherry, orchard peach and country raspberry. It was marketed as a sparkling water but attracted a lot of soda fans who thought it tasted better than most normal sodas on the market. Why do I keep saying soda fans? Stop. Alright, coming in at number 7 now we have Pepsi Blue. Released in 2002, Pepsi Blue was the company's answer to vanilla coke. Pepsi taste tested over 100 flavours for 9 months to create this drink. The resulting flavour was berry. Yeah, that's all they called it. Fans of it said it tasted a bit like blueberries or raspberries with a hint of cotton candy. So basically sugar. Now Pepsi tried to pour this down people's throats by getting Britney Spears and Papa Roach to advertise it but although it has a cult following now who want it back today, it was widely seen as a commercial flop. Moving on to number 6 we have Mr. Pib. These days Americans can get their hands on Pib Extra but some still say that it's no replacement for the original Mr. Pib. That was a tasty cola from the 1970s. 70s, in a time when people had more colas to choose from than just Coke, Pepsi or Dr Pepper. Actually speaking of Dr Pepper, they were the ones who sued Mr Pib because it used to be called Dr Pib and apparently there can only be one doctor in the soda house. In 2001 Pib Extra released cinnamon flavour cola and cherry soda soon followed. If you want to taste the original Mr Pib, those are the closest you can get. Moving on to number 5 now, we have Snapple True Root Beer. Now I'm sure all of you guys know Snapple, it's a very famous brand. But did you know they used to make a root beer too? Now if you don't know what a root beer is, it's not alcoholic, it's not beer, it's actually a sweet soda. For a lot of people out there, Snapple were the ones who introduced them to root beer. Some people said it tasted a bit like licorice, so I think it might have been a bit of an acquired taste, but it was hugely popular at the time. Many fans of it are still wondering why Snapple stopped making it. We may never know. Next up at number 4 now we have Orbitz with a Z. So earlier on we talked about clearly Canadian. Well they used to have a sister drink made by the same company called Orbitz. The first thing that drew people in were the tiny sugary balls floating in the drink. It was kind of like drinking a portable lava lamp. Mmm 
Now it obviously was a gimmick, but it did create huge sales when it was released in 1997. Eventually though, the fad did wear off, probably as people started to realize that drinks shouldn't be able to do that. It ain't natural. I guess all these drinks are natural though. I know. Next up at number three now, we have Jolt's Cola. A lot of people were wondering where this was in part one. I'm sorry, it's here now. Jolt Cola was first released in 1985 as a sort of hybrid between traditional sodas and the emerging energy drink market. Its official slogan for 24 years was Jolt Cola. All the sugar, twice the caffeine. <laughs> Okay, really? I mean, these days, even energy drinks don't boast about their caffeine content, and soda drinks try to play down just how much sugar they contain. Jolt Cola did not care at all. May they rest in obese. Moving on to number two, we have Apple Slice. It was a simple name for a simple soda, but fans loved this drink. It was around in the 80s and catered to people who loved apple-flavored anythings. I personally eat at least two apples a day, I think. Ask anyone who knows me, so I have no doubt I would probably be drinking Drinking this by the gallon. Interestingly, it used to be lemon lime flavor, and now you can get orange slice flavor. Hopefully, they're just working their way through all the different fruit flavors and they'll get right back to apple one day. One day. And finally, at number one, we have Mountain Dew Revolution. This drink was released in the summer of 2008 as part of their Democracy promotion, where fans got to vote on what flavor they wanted to become a permanent flavor for Mountain Dew. Revolution was up against Voltage and Supernova flavors. At the end of the summer, the votes were counted, and Revolution came in last place. Unfortunately, it was then discontinued. Fans of the drink still remember the summer of 2008, where they enjoyed Revolution's wild berry flavor. Some people say that almost 10 years on, they're still demanding a vote recount. Coming in at number 10 now, we have Vault. This was a sweet, sweet cola drink released by the Coca-Cola company back in June 2005. It was their attempt at trying to create an energy drink for people who love the taste of cola. It tasted a lot like Surge, if you guys have ever tried that. Vault was an intense hybrid drink with intense slogans to match, like drinks like a soda, kicks like an energy drink, and also get to it. Yeah, that last one was a little bit weak. The drink lasted six years before finally being discontinued in December 2011. At number nine now, we have Lemon Lime Slice. Pepsi introduced this drink in 1984 to compete with 7up and Sprite. That might sound like a big challenge, but the drink took off in the 80s, with Pepsi introducing more flavor twists such as apple, grape, peach, orange, strawberry, and many, many more. At one point, they actually owned 3.2% of the entire soda market, meaning one in about 33 soda sodas being sold anywhere were lemon lime slice drinks. The drink struggled to stay commercially competitive though and by 2003 Pepsi had sliced its last lemon lime slice. Rest in slices. At number eight now, we have Coca-Cola C2. This was first released in Japan and then in the US in 2004 as a low carb and sugar version of standard normal Coca-Cola. It was trying to be Coke's cool little brother and its ad campaign song was the Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want. Presumably, they meant a good tasting Coke drink because this product didn't do too well. One of the strange reasons was that it couldn't compete with Coca-Cola's other zero calorie drink, Coke Zero. Good job, Coke. You played yourself. Coming in at number seven now, we have True Blood. This one came from the TV show True Blood, where the vampires will sometimes drink a concoction to try and stop themselves from sucking humans dry. Now, some clever marketing person decided to make a real life version of this drink to sell to fans of the show. The sweet carbonated drink was marketed as blood, but I'm guessing it wasn't. Well, not guessing. I'm hoping it wasn't. The slogan for the drink was all flavor, no bite. I'm really, really hoping it wasn't. All right. At number six now, we have Pepsi Natural. This was released in 2008 and was basically the hippie of sodas at that time. It was an all natural cola made with sparkling water, sugar, cola nut extract, and natural sugar cane instead of the normal corn syrup used in most sodas. It was sold in fancy 12 ounce bottles and was only available in premium grocery stores, so posh places. They were hoping to attract people with more money than cents, but they ended up attracting no money at all. The thing is, if people want Pepsi, they're gonna buy Pepsi. There could be more chemicals in there than a chemistry set. Doesn't really matter. All right, now we're at number five and we have Aspen Soda. This one was released way back in 1978 under the Pepsi company. It was a crisp, clear, apple flavored soda and was supposed to compete with other citrus sodas on the market at that time. PepsiCo threw a silly amount of money into this product thinking that apple would be the next big thing, but it really didn't go anywhere. 
Which is quite hard to believe when you see this commercial. Just a snap. A tantalizing snap of apple. Mmm. Ah, oh, they just don't make ads like that anymore. Coming in at number four now, we have Mountain Dew Sport. During the late 80s, Pepsi was trying to create an extremely low calorie flavor for Mountain Dew. In 1989, they released Mountain Dew Sport. Its calorie count was two. Yeah, just two single calories. The diet version claimed to have zero. Now, anyone who has ever tasted a Mountain Dew drink before will understand just how incredible it is that they made a version with two or less calories. Amazing stuff, but the drink sales still couldn't compete with the beast that is Gatorade, and it was finally discontinued in 1991. And that is actually the same year that our number three was released, Pepsi Wild Bunch. This drink really did divide fans. It was Pepsi's attempt at giving a fruity twist to its classic cola and it was uh interesting. The Wild Bunch flavors were Tropical Chill, Raging Raspberry, and Strawberry Burst. Now apparently, they were so sweet you could almost feel your teeth melting. They basically took an already extremely sweet drink and just added sugary new flavors into the mix. Now some people out there, I know, love that, but a lot of people were left just sucking their own gums until the drink was discontinued. Oh, a bit sweet. At number two now, we have DNL. This was released in 2002 as part of the 7up family of soft drinks. The name was 7up upside down. Yeah, if you flip 7up, it spells DNL. Clever stuff. It was opposite in name and opposite in nature. 7up is caffeine free, colorless, and came in a green bottle. DNL was the exact opposite. It had caffeine, it was the greenish color of the 7up bottle, and its own bottle was completely clear. Clever idea but it sadly didn't last too long, being discontinued at the end of 2005. And finally now, at number one, we have Diet Pepsi Jazz. This one shows just how strange soda flavors can get. It tasted like jazz. No, for real though, it was released in 2006, and these were the flavors. Jazz with blackberry and French vanilla, jazz with strawberries and cream, and just caramel cream by itself. I don't know why the last one didn't come with jazz. I don't really know why the flavors had the name jazz in them. It was all very strange to be honest. Apparently, it had something to do with how jazz musicians would get high off caffeine and then come crashing down, and that's why jazz sounds the way it does. Eh, it was a bit of a stretch, to be fair. It was an odd drink, and it was discontinued in 2009.